And Dominique, I'm just going to walk folks through what to expect today. Mm -hmm. um, so welcome everyone to the Tory Birch Foundation webinar on optimizing your business operations. I'm Gabrielle Raymond McGee, the Chief Operating Officer of the Tory Birch Foundation. And today I'm here with the brilliant Dominique Townsend, who I mentioned is joining us from Nashville, Tennessee. And if you don't know Dominique, watch out. She's a lean Six Sigma black belt, which means she knows how to get done anything done effectively. Um, she uses excellence engineering skills to be as effective and productive as possible. She's the founder of We Optimize Work, where she coaches and trains her clients to be more productive, impactful, using engineering principles to maximize results. So I think that's what we all need at the beginning of a fresh new year is how to be productive in our small business, how to be productive in our families, etc. Dominique, has tons of experience. She's coached thousands of clients from all different backgrounds. And I'm especially excited because she has a special program for mom CEOs and working moms. She herself is a mom to four incredible children. As a mom to one and one on the way, can't wait to hear more about Dominique's hacks. And Dominique is really here to give you the most efficient ways to operate your business, engage your team, and align your process for strategic goals. So Dominique, welcome. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. And as Dominique walks through this roadmap for how to be efficient and effective during the new year, um, we'll also be taking your questions. So know that at the end of Dominique's presentation, I will look in the Q&A box, We'll try to answer as many questions as possible, so don't be shy. And now, without further ado, Dominique, over to you. Thank you so much, Gabrielle. Let's go to share my screen. Okay, are you able to see the entire screen? Yes, we can, Dominique. Thank you. The chat. Okay, I'm getting everything set up on my end from a sharing standpoint. Gotta love technology, right? <laughs> so hi, everyone. I'm so excited for the opportunity to lead this session today. Each of you are game changers with a mission to have an impact in this world through your business. Being able to reach how you optimize your business operations for more efficiency and productivity brings me joy. Whether you are just starting your business or if you are a solopreneur or if you have a business with several team members, you are in the right place. Gabrielle, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. In addition to being a mom of four, an engineering operations expert, I am also a virtual backup dancer for Beyonce. Now, Beyonce is not personally aware of this yet, but if I keep saying it, she may call me for her next video. One could dream and fun, right? <laughs> so next slide. So for the next 30 minutes, I want to take you through a journey that consists of three parts. In part one, I want to um, meet you where you are right now in business. So to help you to um, redefine and define how you seek to show up and engage in your business with others, as well as business owners, um, for 2021 especially. So next we will take a look at the products or services that you offer and how to create a process that aligns with your business intentions. And lastly, we are going to learn about business performance improvement. Now it might sound, for some of you guys, this might be an unfamiliar term, but we're gonna walk it through the simple way and I'm gonna guide you through on how to utilize that to make a more efficient and productive new year. So. Comment ready to ex um, ready to optimize. Um, I was about to say exercise. Ready to optimize if you are excited as I am about this session today. And I'm, I'm just able to see the chat, so I hope you guys are um, are chatting away. Dominique, we have folks that are so excited; they're ready to go. Awesome sauce! Thank you, Gabrielle. So let's get started with part one. Because you are unique, how you provide your product or service for your business is unique. Um, this is not an opinion, but a fact. And how you show up as a business owner and engage with potential clients and existing customers is ultimately unique because it's provided 
from you, who you are as a person. Now, the question I have for you, are you showing up as the person and the business owner you define for yourself? Being clear on how you seek to show up and engage as a business owner is an essential step that is often overlooked. And when this is ignored, it can open up the door for comparison, feeling behind, rushing to keep up with others, adding services or products for fear of missing out. I've been there before. <laughs> and can lead you to take unnecessary actions that result in running your operations inefficiently, exhausting you of time and money that could be allocated to an area that is of higher value to reach your business goals. Now, many of you, um, many of my clients, they initially confuse they're setting business goals as groundwork for how they show up. But let me tell you the difference between goals and, and business intentions. So your business goals are your what, um, which, has defined, which has a defined date by um, which you seek to reach your goal by. How you show up is your why, more commonly known as your intention. And it reflects in how you seek to be in your business. And for your business intention, this is something that you can keep at the forefront of your daily focus, weekly focus, your monthly focus to ensure more concrete goals are set and processes are defined with clarity and taking actions that align with that business intention. Now, the lessons you have learned, the experiences that inspired you to start or continue your business, the tug that keeps that gives you that courage to take the next step and the next step all of that leads to who you are and where you are right now. So what does this mean for you and how you show up as a business owner? Now, if you have a pen and paper, I want you to write out the following questions to answer. Now, if you don't have a pen and paper, don't worry. Write your thoughts out that come to mind in the chat. And um, this step, I really would like you to take time on it to digest and serve as a weekly practice, but I want you to write these out. So here are the questions I want to ask you today. How do I seek to show up as a business owner? How do I seek to show up as a business owner? The second question, how do I seek to engage with my customer? How do I seek to engage with my customers? And lastly, what environment or space am I seeking to provide through the existence of my business? The third question is, what environment or space am I seeking to provide through the existence of my business? So examples to help you answer questions like this. Um, one of the examples, to provide a unique personalized experience for my customers in my service-based business, have intentional growth and development of myself and team members, to have an environment that is welcoming to give an easy to understand approach in how my service adds value to the client, to have more time with my family, to provide a scalable product that helps many uh, people provide or feel X, Y, and Z. Another one is to live a more fulfilled life where I seek to take more time for enjoying self-care. Now, this is important because if you set your business intention um, is, is to provide, um, if you set it to provide a unique personalized service, your actions and goals will be reflective of that. And if you're looking to create a scalable product that helps many, your actions and goals may consist of producing products that are not of high variety or um, so you can have increased efficiency in your shipping and your manufacturing processes. If you have a moment of comparison with someone in your industry that adds, um, see if they add a, a new product line, you can reconnect with how you seek to show up for yourself that works in alignment with your intention. This is why this step is really key. Now take the time to answer these questions for yourself. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to write out a date and time that you will go into depth on answering these questions that we just talked about here in part one. I think that's five, four, three, two. So you will receive the recording of this session. And um, also there is a question and answer space after this part, after um, the first three parts I'm gonna to talk to you about. So don't fret if you missed out on anything or you have some clarifying um, questions that, are, that regards this area. In order to provide a process, we're on part two now. What is your business telling you? In order to improve a process, you must first understand and have defined what that process is. 
We start businesses mainly because of a passion or a, an, an expertise that we have that inspires us to start a business that we experience. Um, and then we begin to experience our first clients and regain traction. But say you find yourself spending more time than planned working on the back end of your business, handling unexpected customer service needs, feeling like you are all over the place. In the beginning, you were used to wearing multiple hats and you did what it what was needed to get the product or the service to the customer. But now you're seeing that your operations and operating the way um, your business, the way that you are, will continue to bring you overwhelmed late nights or anxious days. Now, you know you need the help, but to take the time needed to teach someone to do something that you can do with your eyes closed isn't an urgent thing on your to-do list. My point here is, is, is that this approach can cost you um, capacity and it can cost you your bandwidth, meaning being able to take on new opportunities. Every product or service that you provide as a business owner is an outcome of a series of steps that you perform. So getting clear on the steps you need to take, whether that is onboarding a new client, making a product to ship to a customer, or how you market and sell your service, with a, pro, um, with a process and can have, um, that you can have an immediate impact on. You look at your efficiency, you look at your process, putting things in order helps you to easily see what are those gaps? What are the things that can be improved? And it also puts you in more control of defining a system that needs to be done by a resource, whether that is a person or a system um, that can contribute in helping you produce that part of a service. So let's walk to this, um, into the steps of seeing your business as a process. I'm going to walk through the process steps using two examples, one for a service-based business and the other for a product-based business to help give context for those who have a service-based business and they're trying to figure out how do I identify my services or my work or how I work into a process. And the same goes for product-based. If you do not have a process in place, I'm going to give an example so we can, so we can um, be in one accord when we're going through the, um, the steps in this process. So say service-based business, say if you have a plumbing company, an interior decorating service or a coaching business, we're gonna look at um, those lists of services uh, onboarding a client for ABC service. If you have a product line, we're gonna use the examples that consist of companies that have like a beauty care line or clothing apparel line, manufacturing um, and producing a product to meet that customer order. So I want to note too, if you are a nonprofit business, the same flow mission in the examples during the steps will um, apply the same for you. If you utilize products for donations, follow the product example. And if you utilize marketing events, follow the service-based example. Your customers are the people, are organizations who, do, who donate. So there are six steps that I want to walk you through. First, um, review your service or product offerings and identify one offering provide a title for this process. So for example, if you are a plumbing company, you have a kitchen drain declogging service or a shower head installation service. This is the service that you're gonna focus on developing, um, creating a process for. If you're an interior decorating business, that may look like a virtual or in-person organizational service for um, organization service for the bedroom or a kitchen or um, even the, the children's closet. <laughs> So another one is um, another service for that business could be remodeling a design and decor or decor service. If you're a coach, your services may be one-to-one -one services or group coaching. And for product-based businesses, a beauty care line. So this can be a process of how you manufacture and produce a signature moisturizer. We call it signature moisturizer number one. And the reason I say that is because each product, each variation should have a separate process. Even if you're taking the majority of the same steps, often if there's one tweak or one attribute, say if you have two moisturizers or two color products, and this goes for everything, if there's a, a variation of the attributes, you wanna have separate processes because there could be different things or opportunities that are occurring um, with one, with one um, variation of the product. So you wanna have that in there. Another product could be the purple face mask. And for a chocolate candy line, this would be um, a chocolate burrito, that's your product, or a chocolate heaven sandwich. You could tell I like chocolate. <laughs> so if your products or services have a different attribute, I want you to treat them as a different product or a service offering. Second, define the scope of your business. Do you want the process to begin when a customer purchases a product? 
um, or book a service until they uh, until they are provided the product or service, or would you like to cover your marketing efforts needed to promote your coaching services? Define that scope of what you would like to do in that particular step. We're we're gonna um, we're likely covering the onboarding of a client, and then we're looking at the packaging and the shipping of a scope. But typically, you can go longer. You can say it's the the second I put a post up. I'm um, following up with um, customers. I'm following up with people in um, messaging um, to engage with them. I'm sending out freebies for like, what are, what are those triggers that starts the process that you begin to engage or people express an interest in wanting to work with you? Like all of those steps, um, they have a value in what you are looking to do. So third, I want you to brainstorm those steps. And this is where all of the things that you defined, if you can think of a service, if you could think of like one of the products that you want to write things out, which one is sticking you in the side or taking most of your time? That's where I like to tell people to start. If they, um, if there's, if it's a process or a service that takes 12 hours to do, or if there is a product that takes you three days to produce, start there and write out those processes. So what we're gonna do is brainstorm those, um, brainstorm those, and I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. So if, if for instance, if you have a service-based business, you want to focus on the onboarding um, of a client after they have booked a service. Now that would be your scope. For your product-based service, your scope can be the shipping and packaging of the chocolate burrito product. So that is uh, another idea. And we're back to that chocolate burrito again. So <laughs> service-based on workflow for onboarding um, and a, a client can include, like your steps can include, the client wants to book a service, an invoice is sent, um, email confirmation of uh, the payment with the welcome message. The client fills out a form to provide to, that, to the customer um, with insight of what's happening with the service a pre-homework um, that allows the, the allowing of the performance of the service to go smooth, a date for the services book. Those are, are process steps. And those are the things that you really need to lay out and define. And we, I know it's, it's, it's common when you, when you get to um, doing these processes where you're in a flow and you're used to doing them, um, just getting it done. But if you define a process, it's a lot, it allows it to standardize how your workflow is. So say for instance, in your, um, Let's see, we want to, want to look at the product-based business here as well. So when you're looking at a product-based business and you're looking to scope that flow, so if, say for instance, someone is, they email you, they said they want to work with you, you follow up with them with, is that a consultation call? Are you giving them a form to provide um, what information they need? I'm not a, con um, a consultation call, but if they say they want a product rather, and you want to provide that product, you look at the next steps. Okay, this person is interested in the product. I need to gather the right materials. I need to make sure that the packaging material is there. Shipping label. Um, the another step is um, shipping off the product. Are you leaving the house to go to uh, leaving the house or leaving your working space to go to the post office? Is it an automated process where you're printing out a label? All of those steps you want to make sure that you are that you are defining as you're working through writing out the steps. And I mean, every single step that you take. And um, in the next slide, I think I have you know, the documents. I want you to look at those documents as well of how you flow through it. So for each step that you have, I want you to identify what documents, what platforms, what products, people, et cetera, are needed for that step to be completed successfully. This is key. Um, it helps in measuring opportunities for business performance, but when you're looking to invest in automation systems or you're looking for software, it makes you having a defined um, process first. Um, that makes it much more, your experience much more effective and you won't be overwhelmed with adding, um, oh, let's do this because it's a streamlining. Let's get on a Trello. Let's get on a sauna. Like if you want to utilize a platform, anything that you use, you want to make sure you have a clear process and a clear outline. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to clarify that. So I want to get in um, on the documents. So let's refer to a service-based workflow. So back to the client, the client wants to book a service. So the client books a service. They send an email that you check. They sign up a form. They're posting ad pages that, um, that you check. How are, they, how are they booking that service? I want you to write down those documents. I want you to write down the platform that you use. Are you using Gmail that people are you know, reaching out to you for? Them? Are you using a job form? Are you posting on Facebook and you're checking the messaging in the Facebook for people who said they want to book that service with you? 
I want you to write down exactly what you're doing with that and within that step to successfully know if a client wants to book a service. The second part in that process is the invoice is sent. So are you sending the invoice via Stripe? Are you utilizing cash out? Are you utilizing Venmo, um, an email confirmation of a, page, of a payment um, with a welcome message? What does that look like? Are you manually sending the email? Um, do you have an email template in Dubsado workflow that is automated? Um, I want you to be very clear on that. So the next phase in that process will be the client fills out a form. So we talked about the pre-homework. I often recommend people, um, if you're prov providing a service, particularly um, group coaching or one-to-one -one service, I um, highly recommend that you do have like a pre-homework packet that kind of gathers, gathers information that you can get on the front end to increase the value of the time that you have. And also you decrease the time that someone follows up because of um, unanswered questions, um, things that are not, um, that was not clarified during the session. You want to enhance the the experience of that. So that is a, um, a note that um, we did mention in the workflow example. So I want to talk to you about that. So another thing on um, getting that pre-information of the pre-work homework information or things that you may need to make the service go more smooth. Are you sending them a form? Say if you're the plumbing business, are you getting them to provide what year that their house was built in? Um, what, um, where, where is the, where do they think the clog is? Um, for us, we have a, I'm thinking about clogging because we had a kitchen a drain that had to get um, declogged. I mean, a, yeah, a drain line that had to be um, declogged. But those things you really got to think about. They sent us a form. It was a job form. And then after the confirmation, we received a picture of the plumber that was coming over. And we also, like, it, it felt good. So you want to write that down. Um, the other part here is, say, after they complete the homework or do um, provide the information that you need for that service, the next step is confirming that, confirming that date. So if there is a Google Calendar, are you using Calendly? Are you writing it down manually in your appointment book? Write those things down that goes within the process. And comment if, you, um, if that was clear for you. And um, when we get into the question and answer, we'll review that so I can make sure that we had clarity in that part. So for product-based workflow, it's more easy to understand for people. Um, we're looking, we're gonna look at the packaging and the, and the shipping part of a product-based business. So say if you're receiving the order slip or request, then you're looking at the request that was mailed. Was it mailed to you? Um, was it a website? Was it Shopify, e-commerce, another e-commerce site? Was it a Facebook group page? How are you keeping track of those orders and how do you know that those orders are coming? What are you using? And write those things down. Say um, you need to retrieve the materials. So the next step is like retrieving the materials and seeing are they is are the materials at the store? Do you need to order them? Is it a, is it um, something that you don't touch and you're more like a third party? You're just making sure that the things get sent from one one location to the client. Um, do you have the raw materials in your house? Like write all of the, those things down or in your co-working space. I say house because we're most of us are working from home um, at this time. Uh, what are the things that what are the things you need to do to collect those materials to produce that product? Write them out. Write where you get it from as well too. If you have to go, if you have um, a business that's more involved with crafts and its products, and you go to Hobby Lobby, do that. If you have um, some products that you produce and you need to make sure that you're ordering things to white label, meaning you get um, things that are generic brand and you're labeling it or personalizing it with your company information. So all of those things you need to write down, what platform are you using to do that? What service, what supplier, who are you, who are you utilizing to do that? The printing of the label. And I said, yes, on, on this, you wanna write, lay it out in your process. The printing of a label, this is key because you wanna see, are you using your printer? Is it automated? How are you seeing the tracking information? Like, what are you doing with the printing of the label? And it, um, it sounds simple, but I'll tell you this. There was a project that I was assigned to and we saved a second, one second, I think it was one or two seconds. It was one second. And we saved $100,000 over the course of a year for a manufacturing firm because we looked at how they were printing the labels and um, noting the tracking information. Like simple things like that, you wanna write it down because you never know a second can save you a ton of time over the course of a year but also give you an opportunity to see how to improve in different areas. Now that um, you, you could save a, a lot more time, but I want to use that as an example because that was something that was very impressive um, for a company that, that um, they were looking at it. They were like, oh, it's just one second. It doesn't matter. So they will look at the number of people that are doing this, the number of products that are going out. And it was thousands of products, hundreds of thousands of products going out the door. But that one second did just that. 
Um, so those are the things you wanna lay out your process. And we wanna look at, let me think of the um, package. You wanna look at the packaging of, of the material. How are you packaging it? Who are you ordering the box from? Are the boxes in your house? Are you packaging it in boxes? Um, are there bags? So you want to be clear on that. And I walk through those steps, um, be, be um, really specific in that, and then you go below. So if you were to visualize that, which is the fifth step, you wanna draft out the steps in the order to capture the visual. So if I have uh, step one, I know within step one, these are the things that needs to get done in order to go to this step. And then when you get to the next step, what are those things that needs to get done? What are you accessing? What documents are you providing? What um, platforms are you using? Are you doing things manually? Put all of those things into place. And then I want you to test out the process that you rolled out, that you um, see yourself um, doing. And I call this like uh, your as is, like perform the process as is. Um, this is something that is really key because you can see what items are missed within your task that you are defining within your process steps. Um, it is likely that you will see gaps immediately and opportunities within your process, um, especially if you're utilizing a team member because they can quickly ask you questions of, why are you producing that product that way? Or why are you providing that service that way? Um, and also for yourself, you can even look at it and say, okay, wait a minute, what am I doing this for? This is a good opportunity for improvement. So that's the beauty of creating processes and being clear. And what are the areas that I'm focusing on with my business? What am I currently doing? So the where this comes with improvement is here in part three. And again, we're moving um, slightly fast. So we do have a question and answer. I just want to um, let you guys know, um, do not fret. We will have a question and answers. So part three, this is this, and you have the recording so you can pause it and take your time to um, rewalk through these uh, steps as well. So now we're on to business performance improvement. To make your, your um, optimized business decisions, you need to evaluate the performance of the, your business and the performance of your processes and how they contribute to meeting your business goals. So what I mean in this is, let's define business performance improvement because I promised it earlier in the session. So according to wikipedia.org, uh, business performance improvement is measuring the output of a particular business or procedure, then modifying the process or procedure to increase the output, increase the efficiency, or increase the effectiveness of the process or procedure. So notice the commonality in the language. The business performance improvement is revolving around the process and your measure of success. So which is why we walked through defining a process before we touched on this area for performance improvement. So whether you are a solopreneur or a business owner of 500 employees, business performance improvement is relevant to, for your business. So the four steps that I like to walk my clients through um, when it relates to business performance improvement um, are the first step, identify and clarify, two, collect and measure, three, analyze and assess, and four, improve and revise. So step one, identify and clarify. So define what success looks like for you for your business Develop or clarify clear processes that are critical to what success looks like for you. Now, doesn't this sound familiar in our part one and part two? This is why we went through those two areas with the steps and also expressing the importance of questions that you can ask yourself. How do you seek to show up? What does success look like for you? You wanna recall that and um, revisit that first part. How do you seek to show up? Break it down into this step as you go into what those measures of success look like. Um, when you, how this is how I seek to show up, here are the processes that I'm performing. And then you can look and see, well, what are, what are some things I'm gonna do? What things do I need to be, um, bring more focus on? And that's what we covered in part one and part two. So step two is where we want to put quantifiable measures of success, meaning a, a number. Um, what number it tells you that according to this, if we're reaching this particular um, number, this output, this uh, key performance indicator, this is saying we're in good health as a business and how we perform, or it says this is an opportunity for improvement. So in collected measure, you're establishing metrics here. You're, um, and this is where you collect and organize data from transactions, with customers, clients, and all processes perform internally to meet their needs. So there are, there are marketing, financial, and direct sales metrics that should be included in your factors for overall business perform, um, performance improvement. But for um, to maintain the scope of this session, I want to focus on operations-related metrics. 
So here we define quantifiable metrics of what success factors look like um, to keep on track. So measure, um, metrics can include employee efficiency, hitting the desired ship dates for your products that are ordered. If you're performing a plumbing service or one-to-one -one coaching service that you seek to perform, what kind of time do you want to perform that service or how much prep time and uh, that you want to provide in that um, in performing that, that um, particular service. So incorporate a, a measure of success in the lead time. Um, if you have a lead time is um, something that I would like you guys to, to incorporate as your measure um, to produce a product or a service in your business. The lead time is from when the customer initiates paid interest or they um, have created that transaction piece that begins, um, that, that triggers you to begin the action, take the action, um, until the service is fully completed, meaning you, the completion of what they needed or what they desired from you, um, whether that was a product or a service is completed. That is your lead time. This is often an overlooked measure of success as people account for the time of the service um, to just only the time of the service um, to make the product without incorporating the prep time, the onboarding time and the completion of transaction after the service has been completed. Now this metric can be titled um, time performed per service or lead time per product production. Now you wanna look at the quality of your work performance and um, are the items being returned? Are your customers satisfied? Are the clients who are seeking further information from you after your service is completed? You wanna identify that because it can help you look into your process to say, where's the root cause at? Am I not clearly defining what this service entails or the deliverables that this service entails in the pre-homework or in the um, description of the service? You can look in your process and say, oh, I'm not clearly defining that. This is why I am spending more time than desired after the service is completed, handling um, loose ends because I was unclear or did not provide the tools for their client to succeed or feel comfortable with the tools they needed. And the same goes for products. If you're receiving um, response, responses back, says in um, shipping delays, now it's um, due to COVID, those measures, I mean, USPS, you can, they can say things can arrive today or it, it won't arrive for another week. It's, it's uncertain in those areas but you can do your best in looking at how you're communicating and keeping your customers up to date on the status. Even if you have another delay status, I know that could be very frustrating because your customers want their products same day or next day because of Amazon, right? So you got to look at those areas and say, I can communicate better in my customer experience or when I communicate with the customer, let me um, immediately tell them products are shipping um, or there are delayed to spec um, two to three weeks. So sorry about that, two to three weeks. And so those are the things you wanna look at. So step three and four, I want you to analyze and assess. And step four is improve and revise. So analyze your processes that are being, um, that are being performed. Um, I tell some of my clients to dare to assess. Dare, D-A-R-E, um, D, you wanna look at what can you delegate um, within the process, meaning someone else can do or a system can do. A, what can you automate? Um, can, um, well, that's a system. What can you um, automate to like the use of templates? If there are use of systems and workflows that can improve your overall performance, look at that. R, remove. What can we remove? Not every step in your process that, that is defined. If it worked on day one, it's okay if it doesn't work on day 10, you can let it go. Be clear on that. So remove the things that do not long, that do know, um, they do not, longer work for the value of your company and it goes into how you show up, how you, um, how you seek to provide those services. And the other part is E, is there an opportunity to enhance the service? Is there an opportunity to grow? Is there an opportunity, opportunity to expand? I know one of the things that I've done in my services with, uh, with uh, VIP day clients is I provide a personalized welcome video and they I talk to them about the business, what to expect in our VIP day and walk them through um, a kickoff that is virtual and they do not have to worry about scheduling an extra meeting in addition to the VIP day. They click the video, they're learning the information in their own time and convenience, but that enhanced that customer experience. So that is an opportunity to look in your process and say, what can I do to enhance it? If you provide products, what are some things that you can do? Quirky little messages on postcards, you know, those things matter with your customers. And step four, um, they're improving and um, revised. There's always an opportunity for improvement. So keep that in mind. And in conclusion, um, I want you guys to know this concludes the learning portion of our session. We're going to open the floor for question and answer. So I want you to comment. Um, I encourage you to comment your questions 
And if you need further clarity in a particular area, I have um, general feedback that you need, let me know. Um, and before we move forward, I want to quote one of my favorite current reads that I highly recommend you check out is Thrive Through It, authored by Brittany Cole. And in her chapter on managing your mindset, she says, part of becoming the best version of yourself, of ourselves, is having a vision of what that looks like and choosing to believe it. I believe that each of you have the opportunity to shift your business in ways that will align with how you seek to show up, but you must choose to believe it. You have the roadmap and the tools to shift how you operate in business that will lead to increased efficiency and effectiveness. And most importantly, you will be in alignment with how you seek to show up as a business owner and a person. So for today, I am providing an exclusive um, special for attendees today, and that is 30% off our signature Pick Your Brain strategy sessions. You will have direct access to ask me anything and leverage my extensive expertise in operations, strategy, and continuous improvement. Now, this is perfect if you find yourself being stuck in an area of your business that needs a clearer direction and how to get from point A to point B. Um, strategy sessions with me has helped uh, business owners achieve higher capacity to take on additional five-figure clients within two months of working with me. I helped um, a working mom add 20 hours back to her schedule, which is anyone, if, to, if you can add um, hours to your schedule, that's heaven. Um, another, another person, another client helped them turn an idea into a 12-week action plan um, to work on their business and um, operations needs. So to book, um, you have access to a direct link here is bit.ly. Um, work with Dominique, that's a capital W, capital D. Um, and you can also visit our website, um, weoptimizework.com. That is weoptimizework.com um, that has more information about our services. Um, for working moms and mom CEOs, um, you can provide your information in the link that's also provided here um, to learn more about our membership cohort, um, which starts in three weeks. But for the Pick Your Brain Strategy session, feel free to visit that link and you will have, um, we will provide information for you to, to tell you more about um, how to book those um, strategy sessions with me. So I wanna say thank you so much to the Tory Burch Foundation. It is an honor to be chosen um, to provide um, my expertise in building a roadmap for an efficient and productive new year. It's my hope that each of you have learned something um, of value for your journey. So I'm going to take a seat because I know we're going into the question and answer and I look forward to seeing what you, um, what you guys have to ask. Dominique, thank you. This was incredible. We have so, so many new hacks to uh, optimize our schedules and our workflow. I'm going to be calling you to get 20 hours back in my schedule too. That sounds amazing. Yes, yes. Um, so we have we have a number of questions, of course, both from the chat and also submitted in advance. Okay. Um, Lolita and a few other folks are asking for that book name and author one more time. Thrive Through It by Brittany Cole. Thrive, Thrive. Through It by Brittany Cole. C-O-L-E. Mm -hmm. Great. So let's start from the top. In part one, you talk about intention versus goals. Can you... Um, provide a little bit more detail around how you set your intention as a business owner. What's generally your process? What have you seen to be really effective in setting your intention? For me, um, I shifted my business. I pivoted my business um, last year to, so, to focus on how do I provide more operations and um, strategies to, to help people A, be more efficient, but also not feel like they need to compromise on their goals and their dreams. So it all started for me setting the intention, like what kind of environment do I, what kind of service do I seek to provide? And that was to help best position um, working moms and mom and CEOs to uh, better, like to better perform in their professional and personal life without compromising their sanity, their goals, um, are their dreams. And from that intention, what does that look like in a goal? So that's when I put down more tangible, uh, measurable impacts. Uh, I seek to have this, this many cohort members this year for the business. We seek to do this many webinars for the business this year. So that's where the goals part comes in. It's the what, and we want to accomplish this by a particular date. So we want to have this by December 31st. This is the goal for that. But the intention and how we operate helps us to make those pivots. So say if something um, happens again this year where it's a little off, you know, a little uncertain, you know, we can go back to the intention. What is the intention of our business? We can still find ways to add value to where we can pivot and 
make those goals, maybe change those goals, shift those goals, have the date on there, but also operate according to that attention in, in alignment without comparing ourselves to other resources that are out there. I feel like folks often have the goals um, and often don't include dates. So those goals are kind of always looming over us, right? Um, mm -hmm. But without a specific date. So I love hearing the date. Do you keep your intention and goals near your computer? Do you look at it every week or how do you, how does it stay top of mind for you? Yeah. So it stays top of my, my screen just did something. So that's why I was looking at the other screen to see what was happening. Did it flash your intention? <laughs> it should have had the, the website. I mean, the thank you. Is that still up? That's still up. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So can we repeat that? I'm sorry about that. Um, so I was just asking how you keep your intention and goals top of mind and uh, visually close to you, because it's really easy, especially it's January, it's a new year, mm -hmm. it's obviously still a year of uncertainty for all of us. Um, but how as business owners, do we remember those goals and intentions in March or April, et cetera? We want to keep writing those down. So we have to write them down and revisit those and, and make it make the intention to check it. Do you want to set a cadence? I, I like to recommend people set a cadence, a cadence that works for them. For me, I like to have it daily if I start feel, feeling overwhelmed. If there are moments that I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, I like to make sure that I go back to the intention, go back to it daily. And then at times when things are smooth, you know, I still keep it at the top of mind weekly. We um, I share the, uh, my business intentions with my team every Wednesday during our operations meeting. It's something that keeps the top of mind how we operate. We want to make sure, are we providing services in this way that supports people, that helps them to know like, okay, if you don't want to, or, or feel, if you, I don't want pe people to feel forced to downshift or forced to compromise their goals. If they choose to, that's a whole different a whole different story. So if they are choosing to say, oh, I really want to do A, B, and C, we want to make sure that we're still having our intention and our actions aligned with supporting that. But it all goes to keeping that at top of mind, how we work, how we operate, what are we doing to provide services? What are we doing to add value to people? That is the key right there. Mm. And I love how you talk through the flow um, because so many entrepreneurs in our community are solo entrepreneurs. They're doing this by themselves on a daily basis. And I know it's easy to have your process, right? And not think through areas of, to improve efficiency or cut things. And I'm just gonna say, I took notes for DARE. So DARE is delegate, automate, remove, and mm -hmm. enhance. Yes. And I think those steps are so brilliant for our solo entrepreneurs. And I know you mentioned sitting down with a team member or someone outside of yourself mm -hmm. and talking through those steps to see if they notice anything that can be improved. Um, what have you seen when you've sat down with others on your own process and how have you um, had folks from the outside or on your team say, oh, let's do this or you can remove this? What's What have been the key takeaways from others? You know, one of my key takeaways is, is is really like with the dare is having a process to use the dare too. Um, the gaps in not having a clear process or procedure because uh, when you start your business, you start it from a passion and you started from your expertise. So as you grow, you add team members on and you give them tasks here and there. And um, you're just like, oh, well, I still, you know, well, they can do this. And you still bogged down and doing some of the end of weeds work um, because you don't have the processes in place to apply the dare. So what um, I've discovered is that when people have that defined process, they're applying the dare. I've uh, literally seen businesses triple in their um, capacity and triple in their revenue within a few short months, uh, three months, three to um, four, I'll say three to four months on average. I want to say, if not sooner in um, people seeing the uh, impacts to their capacity and even how they serve their customers, even how excited they are about their business, because sometimes, you know, you start your business for your expertise, but if you have to do the back end needs when you are working on administrative work that um, kind of bogs you down and doesn't it doesn't allow you to be out there yet because you're trying to get things done behind the scenes. You know when you have those moments, you know you have to define what are those processes that you're that you're taking and how can you utilize the system or or um, also utilize a system or a resource so when you do onboard people, you're not feeling like you don't have enough to assign to them. 
Um, it's all about daring and, and also being daring and delegating, daring and automating, daring and, and removing things and daring to enhance because it, it, um, it requires you to shift out of your comfort zone of your day-to-day -day busyness um, and, and get you into a more clarified, standardized state. Hmm. I, I think you should brand dare and create coffee mugs so that we can all have that dare reminder next to us when we're at our laptops, just kind of in the zone. And um, I've, I've often brought this up, but Seth Gooden, brilliant author, I know you and I both love him. Mm -hmm. He has said to our, our Tory Birch fellows, are you here to be a freelancer or a founder? And I, I think that statement and that question is so brilliant because as solo entrepreneurs, often you're the lone wolf, you're doing mm -hmm. it all on your own. Um, but in order to really scale your business, you have to delegate. So yes. I know we have many questions about delegation. So let's dive right into <laughs> delegation in more specifics. Okay. Um, we have many founders in our chat saying it's too hard to delegate. When I've delegated to others, it's the work product is never as good as if mm -hmm. I did it myself. Mm -hmm. um, we've had our, our very own marketing guru and prior guest Ramon Ray is asking about delegation as well. Mm -hmm. How do you get out of the weeds, Dominique, and delegate and make sure that your work product is not compromised? Uh, you have to look at A, do you value your time um, and B, are you clear on the quality of service that you want? If people aren't producing the quality the, of the service or the product or the outcome of what you seek because of the task, it, you have to go back to the process. You are not needed for every single process or every single task in your business, but we have to look at if we have moments where it's like, I have too much to do to, to spend an hour trying to tell this person how to do something that only takes me 10, 20 minutes to do. So let's look at our time. Say if it takes you only 20 minutes to do and you do it three times a week, but for you it's like, oh, okay, it doesn't take long, it's only 20 minutes. But over the course of, of six months, that's 24 hours. Over the course of six months, that's 24 hours that you're, that you um, do not want, that you have chosen not to take that hour of focus of training someone to perform that standard. And of course, when you initially hand things off, people are not gonna do things as good as you do or what you feel um, is as good as you can do. Uh, but that's when you go into clarifying the process and clarifying that outcome. That's when you look at your key performance metrics, look at your like um, create employee metrics and expectations to make it very clear this is the, the level of standard that I'm looking at. This is our intention. I know with my team, I have an excellent team and they know the intention, they know the goal and assigning the things, they, um, look at, they look at the intention, they look at how we seek to show up as a business. So being clear on those ends, those metrics, being clear on how you seek to show up, going back to the process, all of that stuff is what you have to hand to someone if you have that opportunity to hand to someone. And you can also utilize uh, systems. So say if you don't have the money to delegate a task to another person, you can start looking at systems. Um, you can look at a sign up for managing your task, you know, getting things done on time. You can look at um, monday.com. You can look at different resources that can help you align that, but you have to first value your time and then understand what, is, what are my expectations? Am I clear on the expectations? And is the process that I'm handing off to them, is it preparing them for success? And if not, that's an opportunity to look in both of those areas so you can understand it, um, understand those um, in a, from a delegation standpoint. And so part of the process in, in writing down the various steps is to have standards that you can then pass on and delegate to others so they understand what the expectations are. So that's very yes. helpful. Um, everyone wants to know, you've mentioned Asana, you, you mentioned one other, I didn't catch it, but everyone wants to know what are your favorite, My favorite. tasks and software systems that exist that help you stay productive? So I really like Asana. Um, I like to look at it from a board standpoint. My, um, my mind naturally thinks in things as tasks. So when I say a board, meaning like if you have Trello, um, Trello boards, you can easily categorize things. I love to see it categorized in certain and look at different aspects. So we have a marketing aspect of the company. We have a operations, we have a content management um, aspect of the company. And Asana helps really good with that because I can quickly go in there, brain, I have a brain dump board where I just dump all the tasks that are in my brain. And then as I'm looking throughout the week or I'm looking in future weeks, I can assign those tasks to some of the team members. I can assign the tasks to myself. 
myself and um, easily navigate through that. And you can see the progress in it. So I like using Asana and for onboarding of client and automation at that point, Dubsado is a good tool um, to use as well. Um, that can take off the, um, like the heavy admin work that takes an onboarding or trying to what figure out scheduling. I missed Dubs that one. Dubsado. Dubsado. With and Beck. I think Becca Bird is uh, the fact. Becca Bird is one of the co-founders of Dub Sado D U B S A D O. Okay, great. We'll include that in the chat too. Anything else? What other ones? Um, those are the ones I'm I'm leaning on. Uh, I know that um, I'm getting more familiar with Microsoft Teams. Uh, I've seen people uh, utilize that and um, sharing their documentation. I like Google Docs. I, I mean, I like simple stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, I like sharing things in Google Folders with clients. I like to have, I create folders for them, but you can also use project man management software for that. But I prefer to use um, Google Docs quickly, giving them templates because it's easy for me to share with them and they can download it in their system. And I already have access to that. And Asana, like I'm heavy with those two. And one of those, like once I like it, I stick with it. But I have with clients, um, if they are using different platforms, we assess it to see, is it adding value? And most of the time it adds value for them, but they have to be clear in their processes. So the experiences that I've seen that have not favored in project management tools, I, I, can, I will say you can use any of the project management tools, but you have to be clear in what you want to utilize it for or in how you want to utilize it. Do you want to use it as a project management tool? Are you using it as a personal um, task list? Are you using it to house pro, um, projects and, and um, personal information for people, for some of your, your um, admin that needs to access information to complete things for you? Be very clear in what you want to do, and that's what helps you um, in and utilize the um, platforms that you use for Asana, Dove Sato for customer onboarding. We're still working on um, some of the automation for some additional services on our end, um, and we're using that platform right now. And as far as scaling and growing your team, because we're getting a number of questions about how to increase capacity, um, if you don't have an in-house team, are there certain inflection points, or when do you know if you need to build a bigger bullpen of freelancers or bring someone on board as a specific consultant or full-time employee? What does that look like to you? Yeah, if um, on that, if you reach a point where you don't have the time to do the critical activities needed to meet your customer need or um, keep your keep your business afloat, like these are some things that are needed. That I have to get this done and I don't even have time to get to it. Or you, if you um, have an idea in your mind of I, I want to have a customer experience to be this way and you don't have the time to create that, that's when it's an opportunity to delegate. But if you are a sol like a solopreneur and you don't have the resources to invest in team, so I'll do it for the solopreneur and the person that has the money or the funding ready to invest in the team. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the resources, look at how the infrastructure, like look at that, the lead time, how can you improve in the onboarding? How can you improve in different systems so you can utilize um, platforms that cost like nine to $13 a month, or you can use free trials just to test it out. But I would say, just look at, um, look at how can you restructure how you produce certain things and, and you're going to be able to scale. I know that um, the people often say, what is your focus? You need to have focus on one product, focus on two. Some people have more than one product that they really like to provide. So in that case, if you're a solopreneur, you need to be very clear in how do I look at resources that can be automated within, within my um, process? How can I drive down the time or look at your service and say, what can I change about this service? What can I change about this product? If you have different variations of products and you have a candle line and there's different um, variations, is there a, um, a, a, a similarity in those processes that you can do um, in bulk? And then you can add those extra little pieces that makes that product unique. Look at those ways as, um, as, as one of the opportunities and they can help you scale and then you can get to the point where you can have um, invest in teams. But if you are um, where you can invest in teams, you need to look at the process to see what areas need to be delegated and how would this resource add value by performing that task. So if you don't have time to do things, look at that commonality. And because uh, that's a sign that you need to delegate or dare, you need to automate, you need to remove, or you need to enhance. So you can look and see, okay, within this, this is something that I can't necessarily automate, but I can identify a resource that can help with this. That's when you can identify what kind of team member do I need to onboard? 
Is it a person that's part-time? Do I just need to hire them for five hours a week? Look at the time it's taking you. Like, what is that time that you don't, that you are um, feeling that you don't have? Is it five hours a week? Is it 20 hours a week? Is it 30 hours? That can help you navigate what you need to do in your next steps in onboarding and being clear in the tasks that they're going to perform. What is it that you're overwhelmed in? And um, narrow down your focus in defining that before you onboard a team. And that takes a discipline to really reflect on what's working and what doesn't. And you mentioned a few keywords, um, focus and time management. And we have many, many questions about time management. Um, I often say Jimmy Buffett's song, Five O'Clock Somewhere is <laughs> not relatable at all for entrepreneurs because no. entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs never want it to be five o'clock. Um, so do you have any suggestions we have people asking like, where did the day go? How do I really focus on my time management? What hacks do you recommend for a solo entrepreneur to really focus in on what, what matters versus all the noise and distractions and shiny objects around us? You got to be clear on what it is that you seek to do for the day and remove. So I know we often want to have urgency in how we respond to emails and making sure we're following up with people. But if you are finding yourself not having the time to do your essential things for your customers, your active customers and customers that are getting ready to, um, that are purchasing products or customers that you're going to provide a service for, you need to get clear on that. I, I close the email. I, I, sometimes I cringe because it's still, it's a daily thing. You know, sometimes I cringe because I don't want to miss an email and not be that person that, you know, follows up like I need to. It's not quick. And it's, and it's like, I have to give myself that time because how I seek to show up as a business owner is not that part with answering emails every single second. You know, it's not in alignment, in direct alignment. It's important, but it's not in direct alignment or um, in where I seek to go. And so that means, okay, I'm going to have uh, windows of time that I'm going to check the emails and, and discipline, move it to another screen, you know, cut it off, you know, whatever you need to do, but you need to be clear on what you want to do for the day and understand your capacity. We, we do time management. There's a lot of time management uh, platforms and books and things out there that's like work a hundred hours a week in order to, to get to the next step. Well, what does that mean if you don't have that much time? Like you need to be clear on the day that like, this is what I need to do today, but this is my capacity. And what I mean by capacity, what are the number of hours do you actually have to work on business related items? Like in actuality to your own pace at your own, in your, at your own definition, whether you have two hours a week to work on your business, whether you have 60 hours a week, define that capacity first and then look at the tasks that you need to do and simply rearrange and, and um, move around tasks to particular dates that that um, that you have that capacity, like the number of hours, and be very clear on what you want to do. And if you find yourself twiddling your thumbs, it might be an area that's not your zone of genius. You know, um, that that's that's something that you might need to look at delegating. Like I know um, I can talk to a brick wall, I can write things out, but from a um, content standpoint that I take longer than average in that area of making sure it sounds right and I want to post it or share an article. So those are things that I know, okay, well, it's not my zone of genius, but these are the things I need to do. So there's someone that edits, there's someone that look, that reviews the content without me sitting there for an extra hour trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong. And yes, you have, we have Grammarly, but I, um, I still naturally just sit there instead of like typing the things out. These are the things I, um, I, this is my thought process in this, this is the article in this, and then um, having someone edit to edit that. So if you don't even have a team member for that, you can um, find someone a resource, reach out and say, who I have some um, content that needs to be edited. But that's an example of many that people often go through. If you're finding yourself like all over the place, what about this task is taking you longer than what you planned? Is it interruptions? Is it not accounted for your capacity? Um, what is that? And then you go from there. So I, I think that that is something key to do um, with time management is understand your capacity because your capacity is not the same as someone else's, like it's not the same and it's okay. Um, just being sure in, uh, for that for yourself is where, is where the key is with time management. I don't have 40 hours to work a week that for services. I can do early mornings to work on things that, that are working on the business of getting things done, um, um, putting some, um, tying up some loose ends, answering emails, um, checking things. But during the day, I probably have four to five good hours 
to perform a service. And I know that at this at this place, the oldest three children are literally right here in schooling and um and and this interruptions, it's troubleshooting these, it's things that are happening. And everyone has their met their if their interruptions that they have. Is it someone that um a phone call, if it's someone that always calls you, or you start getting on the Instagram rabbit hole and you look at one post and 15 minutes later, like what are those things that are triggering you while you're working on the task and what leads it to take more time? I know for me, I'm mostly interrupted during the right when they get ready to log in. If I need, if the daycare is open and I, I'll take the youngest or two year old to the daycare, I know during that time, scheduling meetings is not optimal for me because I don't know if I'll be able to show up and be fully engaged, but I know if I try to work on a task, it's not, you know, I don't know what that looks like for my success. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like I'm falling behind because I operated beyond the capacity that I knew I, that worked for me right now. So I think that that's something that we have to do. And when you have more hours, the more hours, the better, right? You know, um, but you got to be clear on what it is you want to do within that. And then give yourself grace. You know, if you need to move something to another day, if you see that your, you know, your capacity is hit or you're interrupted, just be very clear on that. But the time management works with making sure that you're going in a flow that works for you and not what you think is working for everyone else. Because many people you see, they have a village behind them, helping them do the things that they do and look fabulous while doing it. Don't compare mm -hmm. yourself to that. Start where you are. If you have two hours a week or if you have 10 hours a week, so whatever that is, you know, work on that and don't feel like you're behind because how you seek to show up has no timeline. It's all about what is it that you seek to do for yourself? What is that? Why? And there's no date on that. Remember, that's the goal. You know, the goal is to hit this number and then you can change it according to how you want to show up and you can pivot and make those changes because you define it for yourself. So that's the thing that I um, do recommend for people, but time management can often put people in overwhelmed if they go about it in the traditional sense without understanding their own capacity. Well, their own capacity. And I love that you mentioned grace. I know you and I talked about this a bit before as, as parents, you have to have grace for yourself and, and certainly your children. And um, I know we're tight on time. So I'm going to just try to wrap up a few really important questions that we keep getting. And okay. Dominique, you're certainly, you're a mom, you're an expert coaching mom, mom CEOs, and we have so many questions from parents who are homeschooling children, taking care of elderly parents, dealing with all of these, these new bigger roles mm -hmm. um, during this pandemic, while also trying to keep their business afloat. So um, what specific hacks do you have for parents who are entrepreneurs who feel all over the place mm -hmm. and need help with focus and getting clear on how to get things done for their business and their families. I, I say that's the capacity right there is, is super key. Um, if you if you're if you know that there are some hours that are um, uninterrupted, then those are some times that we're not going to schedule out. We're not going to include this in the time we have to actually work on a product or work on a service or work on um, anything. I know when I had to pivot, it was like my business needs came last. Like everything that I needed to do didn't matter because I'm still trying to troubleshoot and get things done here. So for my parents out there, if you're feeling that, if you feel like you don't have time, give yourself like have a day that you're like, you know what, this is my working on the business day. This is my day that I'm just going to sit down and see how do I seek to show up with where I'm at, with what is going on? What can, how can I add value in my own way according to my own capacity? I know like for me, I could, I could do um, in virt um, virtual, I can't do a, a ton of in-person. Um, so I know that that shifted the business a lot. Um, I know that I did, like I found myself not having the time to make those strategies because I was trying to get products and, and services sold at the same time building the business. But when you look at it from your own capacity and how you want to show up, it's going to require time for you to sit and block out a time. If you if you have a day to say, you know what, I'm not going to check an email today. I'm not going to um, reach out. Now, if you do have some link, some things that are hanging out there that you need to meet for your customer needs, do that. But block out a day or two where you're sitting down and you're saying, where am I at? You know, based off of what's happening, what what's working, what's going to work for me, and and be very clear on that and, and just redefine it for yourself. And, and not try to fight being this quote unquote normal. Like it's, it's all about not fitting what used to work into what's happening now. Like what, according to what's happening now, 
what happened is my why still the same if my why is still the same what am i seeking to do and how i show up in doing that you control that narrative and it's not easy um every day there are days where you're like i have this awesome plan to take over the world today and this one tech um one tech issue with the computer um a child arguing over french toast sticks which my kids done not too long ago like it it, it can take anything um it could it could be anything that can kind of just throw your day off, but give yourself grace and say, you know what? I know there's some tasks that are very important that I need to meet. I will do that for the rest of this day. If um, just, just sit there and say, let me break it up. Why am I frustrated? What do I feel like I don't have time for? Get clear on that, get it out and look at it because what you'll see is you'll be able to get that bird's eye view to say, oh, I see that I'm more frustrated because I envision working this certain way, but that was when the, the environment wasn't like this. That was when we were not managing schooling from home. So the, you can sit down and, and look at, okay, where am I at? What, what What's actually happening with me? And let me em, embrace that. Let me understand this is my, this is what's happening. This is what it is. And how you show up, it, it, it um, attracts people in so many different ways because they see, they can feel that in how you provide your service. They can feel that in how you provide your product. It takes that, that scarcity mindset that you're falling behind, that scarcity mindset that you need to compare yourself to someone else be, uh, away because you're operating at your own pace. And if you have those days, yes, it's frustrating, but like do the tasks that are necessary, that are very critical, but look at your capacity in your week and say, okay, I need to shift this task to this day because this one is an off day. Like it's clearly off and it started in the morning. It's all right. Like don't beat yourself up. Believe me, there's no race. You're like, you're in your own race and how you show up, all of those things will pay off as you continue to set that focus and continue to recenter yourself on where you are and how, um, how like, what are some ways I can commit to myself to show up in my business? Oh, well, this service, I want to do this. Yes, the goal was here, but how can I do that with what I'm working with now? What the time I have available now? And are there creative ways to utilize systems? Are there creative, creative, creative ways to even, um, I would love to like, um, I call it like on demand resources. I would love to like have someone where it's like four business owners and say, hey, let's all put in, you know, this much money a piece to invest in a person to do services for our four companies and they work together to help that. So just look at creative solutions. Like I, I love just the thought of, of people working together to say, let's share a resource if they have that capacity, like all of those things, utilize those and, and ask for help in ways that um, do not have shame because um, you're going to, um, you're going to probably have moments where you need to ask for help just to find what that is that you need. And um, you'll be amazed when you operate at your own pace, you start to feel less overwhelmed and feeling behind or feeling like you, like the days just left you and you didn't do anything in your business when you start looking at where you are and um, providing yourself with that, with that grace, um, but also looking at your, and um, looking at your capacity and understanding that um, the redefining things as you narrate. So that's where it's really key to have processes, have clear um, steps in place. But if you um, haven't had a chance to do that, you need to block that immediately because you deserve that. You deserve to create a flow in, in areas that you have a lot of things going on everywhere else. At least in the business, you can have a clear process where you can easily look and see what needs to be tweaked and improved. But that's my recommendation for parents and, and also people that are like have crazy hectic schedules and nothing changed and they're still all over the place like it's very key to do those um to do those things it's it's all of us right now and i think you're so right it's about taking time to know what's working for you mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. um, and i've i've recognized my son wakes up very early and i i just need to wake up at least 15 minutes before <laughs> Because if we're up right at the same time, I feel like there's oh, my no whole day's off. <laughs> so it's just that 15 minutes. Um, that's so, essential. so I know we're, we're out of time and we could chat all day. This has been so incredible. So leave us with the one action item you want all of us to take to improve our operations and efficiency today. I would say start with your business intention. 
um, it, it, it's your it's your stake in the ground. So when things, you know, I call I, I'm a bad analogist, but I'm gonna do it anyway. What the heck, you live once, right? So your intention is like that stake in the ground, and you tie a ribbon around it, and your processes are flowing along in alignment with that stake. And if it goes any kind of way, you still have that foundational piece, that stake in the ground. That's your intention. Start there, because um, if you create your processes without having the um, definition of how you want to show up or that intention of how you seek to show up as a business, then you, the ribbon goes away in the wind. <laughs> it's probably a bad analogy, but it's, I mean, somebody gets me out there. So I, I think that, that you have to have that stake in the ground and that stake in the ground is your why, your intention. And when you show up, you show up unapologetically, you're you, you're okay with defining yourself at your own pace. Sure, I want to save the world, but if I can touch one working mom or one mom CEO or one Part, one business owner who had an idea and they just want to like make a trillion dollars from it like whatever it is at least I could do it at my my own pace but it were is that one person is you know one person at a time is, is what matters to me the most and 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 for me that is changing the world so you have to just redefine that because that showing up that intention is what helps me it keeps me from having those comparisons, like, wait a minute, um, okay, I'm going to comparison mode, let me go back, how do I seek to show up for me? And what does that look like for me where I'm at with my capacity? And, and that has a higher value in so many ways. When, um, when you operate like that, it feels so free, you know, it, it feels free. That's my thing for the year is freedom. And that's just being free to authentic and operating at my own pace. If it's, if I have to slow down because of the, the capacity goes down, I can still show up that same, show up the best I can in the best way, best version of ourselves, you know, um, in that time frame. So I, 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 for me, that's what helps me put that stake in the ground. I know it's a bad analogy, put the stake in the ground and that's um, your intention. That's the first thing, set a time and a date where you just say, how do I seek to show up and how do I seek to engage with people? You know, where, where am I at right now? You know, and what, what was, what about this business that I, want to keep conducting these business or providing this product or providing this service to help this person get to where they seek to go in the world. Because when you do that, you're, you're unlocking the, the blocks that many people in the world have. They're waiting on your product that comes from you. And they don't care, you know, that you're not hitting it at the pace that you want. They only care that you show up and you are doing it with at your own pace and in your own unique way. And you're unlocking that, you're unlocking that purpose all because you stay close to that stake in the ground. So I would say setting your business intention and how you seek to show up as a business owner and a person um, is key. That's, that's, the, that's the one takeaway, long takeaway, but that's the one takeaway that I uh, recommend for everyone out there. Well, Dominique, thank you so much. This has been so informative and we're so, um, fortunate that your zone of genius is so clear. You're such an expert on operations and how to optimize. And I know we're all going to want to pick your brain. We'll follow you um, and continue the conversation. So thank you so much for all of these insights and hacks. We're thank so you grateful. so much. Thank you for taking your time to, to watch um, this session. And thank you to Brush Foundation for this opportunity. Our absolute honor. And um, just one final hack from our audience Shannon is saying to doist is a is a great software system to check out as well and I've been yeah. lots of buzz around that one so we'll all check me too it out. I'm gonna check that out as well yeah.